Hey Sunny friends, welcome back to the Sunny News. For those of you not interested in things to do from an American point of view, this channel might not be for you. But those who are, I actually should have made this video a long time ago because so many of you reach out to me on social media and ask, Hey Sunny, I'm planning a trip to London. Do you think there's a chance I'll be able to see Stonehenge? And my answer is maybe. So stay tuned if that's something you think you want to do. And if you're from the UK, I need you watching too, because there's some questions I have about the Stonehenge experience. And all of you need to make sure you watch until the end of the video when I share with you the one day you do not want to be at Stonehenge. I'm basing the information in the video on my three trips to Stonehenge. The most recent was last week when I was a guest of Tourist England on a premium coach tours trip. The biggest misconception is Stonehenge is easy to get to. Take a look at a map. Stonehenge isn't near anything. First, we're gonna find London, and right there you will find Stonehenge. Observe the cities around and see just how many you recognize. You might actually want to pause the video here. And do you see anything else on the map that sounds familiar to you? If you can take a train, it's going to take you down to Salisbury. And from there, you're going to have to get a bus to Stonehenge. Your next option could be to drive yourself. I never recommend that American tourists rent cars when they come to London. This journey looks like it would take anywhere from an hour and 40 minutes to two and a half hours, and that's assuming you don't get lost. Just for fun, I googled how long it would take if you actually cycled to Stonehenge, and that is eight hours and 56 minutes, and there's your route. Two of my three trips to Stonehenge were on a coach, it's my preferred method of getting there, especially if you have a short stay while you're in London and Stonehenge is at the top of your list. Early on a Sunday morning, I took the London Underground to Victoria Station, and then it's about a five to seven minute walk to Victoria Coach Station. We left at approximately 8.30 and the coach trip took an hour and 45 minutes to Stonehenge. I also made sure to sit in the front seat on the top of the double-decker bus so I could absolutely show you everything, sunny friends. For those of you without international data plans, you'll be happy to know the coach did have Wi-Fi. The service was pretty good. We were given an hour and a half to see Stonehenge. As we got off the coach, our tour guide gave us a ticket we could use for the shuttle that takes you from the visitor center up to Stonehenge, which is actually a mile and a half distance apart from each other. You would think arriving that early wouldn't be a problem, but I found it already to be really crowded. In fact, you kind of had to fight to take pictures of Stonehenge because so many people had to take that Stonehenge selfie to prove to everyone they were actually there. And honestly, between taking the shuttle back and forth and trying to fight to take pictures and video, I found an hour and a half to be the perfect amount of time. The tour guide suggested that we stop at the cafe and maybe the gift shop, but I really didn't even have time for that much. You might want to stop either early the morning of the tour or perhaps the night before and get some snacks or a little packed lunch. And I can imagine if you arrive later in the day, it's even more crowded. What I really liked about this trip and why I picked it is it pairs the second half of the day with a trip to Bath. Now I know if you're from the UK, you're probably going to say Bath, but it's just more natural for me to say Bath. And it's a very popular city for Americans to ask me about also, given it's in relatively close proximity to Stonehenge, that's the city that I think you should pair up to make a full day experience, especially if you're only gonna have one day to get out of London. People from the UK, I would love to know, and I'm sure people researching Stonehenge would value your comments below, your thoughts on a trip to Stonehenge. Is it something that you do maybe on a school trip as a child, or is it a really popular thing for all people in the UK to make some kind of pilgrimage at one point in their life to Stonehenge? Finally, something our tour guide said that made a lot of sense to me after I thought about it is, there's one day where they do not run tours to Stonehenge aside from your regular bank holidays, and that is the summer solstice. I'm gonna let you think about why. 
If you're interested in visiting or even living in London, give me a follow because I regularly post videos with advice or fun things that I've experienced here. I'm always looking for great ideas. And as always, thank you for watching. Now we're going to do this one with sound. I don't know. Sound generally makes a difference when you're making a video. <laughs> okay, so first you need to, you actually don't need to know that. But the bus, <laughs> starting again, the bus left, no, it's not a bus. I traveled on the, we were told before we got off the coach that we would have one and a half hours at Stonehenge and our tour guide gave us a tickle. <laughs> you have to say that. Yeah. This is the take you're going to use, by the way.